Um, so yeah, so my name is Kaylin Brana. I'm the campus recruiter for BKD in Kansas City. Um, so I have met so many students um, that usually are making the transition from community college or maybe another school into um, accounting or business. And there's just a lot of questions um, for sure about the accounting program. Um, I've been a recruiter for quite a few years now, uh, but I've been a accounting recruiter for um, actually this week is three years. I'll be, uh, I've been with BKD. And so accounting recruiting is just a different, different world. So um, I just wanna make sure that we're able to just discuss kind of what that looks like and really answer any questions that you may have. Um, obviously, you know, we try to be on campus and try to make ourselves available, but having this opportunity to come to so many of you guys at once is, is amazing. So thank you so much, Ashley, for getting this together. Um, so with that being said, I do want to kind of go over the agenda of what we're going to talk about today. Um, so who is BKD? Obviously, I want to kind of let you know about our company and who we are. Um, I want to talk about tax versus audit. That's a huge question that I get from so many people, juniors, seniors even. Um, so I do want to make sure that I'm able to talk a little bit about that. And then I do have public versus private. Um, another question, especially if you are just kind of getting started in the accounting world, um, there is a lot of questions about that. And then, of course, the recruiting timeline, it's always changing. And so I want to make sure that you guys are prepared for that. I'm also going to chat a little bit about the CPA exam as well. There's been some changes with that. So, um, again, just trying to hit on some of those um, frequently asked questions for you guys. So um, I am going to try and monitor the chat, but I also um, get a little sidetracked. So, um, yeah, if you have questions, definitely send them in there. And I know Ashley will probably help me as well. So go ahead and get this started for you guys. So um, who is BKD? Uh, so this is just a few of the facts and figures. We, um, we actually are a mid-market public accounting company. Um, we do handle some publicly traded companies, closely held businesses. We have governmental entities, non-for-profits, and we do some high wealth individuals as well. Um, we do have just under 300 or 30, goodness, 3,000 professionals. Uh, we have over 300 partners and principals as well. Um, right now, we're about $679 million in revenue. We are trying to get to a billion by our um, 100th year. So we were founded in 1923. So we're just around the corner from 100 years in business. Our headquarters are in Springfield, Missouri. So not too far from the Kansas City office. Some of you may even be from that area. We do have 40 offices in 18 different states as well. So there are multiple opportunities for you, not just in the Kansas City office, although that is where I sit. And obviously I'm the one that recruits at UMKC. We also are a member of the Praxity Global Alliance. Um, that allows us to work with other firms that may be overseas in different countries. Obviously we are a national firm here in the US, but sometimes our, our companies and our clients, they do have you know, warehouses or companies or extensions of their companies in other countries, but we do not have the access to practice there. So we will reach out to our firms that are in the Praxity Global Alliance, and they will partner with us to help get, um, get what needs to be done in those specific offices or warehouses done. So if they need to go count tractors in a warehouse in Canada for a company that's located in Wisconsin, you know, that's something that we would be able to do there. Um, this year, we actually became one of Glassdoor's Employees Choice Award winners. So, um, you know, definitely a, a really great award. This is national. We are the only public accounting firm that made this list. So uh, definitely an honor for us to be one of the best places to work for Glassdoor in 2021. And then again, just to let you know a little bit about organization, um, you know, what we're doing when it comes to the industries and how we kind of break up our organization. So we do tax, auditing, consulting, and accounting outsourcing. So that is, is primarily how we are divided up between all of our offices. And then you can also see the industries that we're in. So if you do a public accounting uh, route, you will get to dabble in a lot of different industries, not just one if you went into private. Um, so that is just a few of the stats there. And of course, we'll go over you know, public and private here in just a moment, but um, just wanted to kind of let you know how our company is divided up. All right, and then just a little bit more about BKD Kansas City specifically. Um, we do have an eight to one partner to associate ratio. We do have quite a few partners in this office, 27 partners. Um, we have around 282 employees currently. It depends on, you know, if we have our interns in and stuff like that too. 
And then we do have what we call the SAS committee. So uh, it is the activity squad. So we are always doing something. We have a Royals game coming up with the tailgate. We do the holiday party. We're doing happy hours for tax and audit. We're doing Olympic games, uh, ice cream trucks, um, coffee baristas. Culture is such a huge part of what um, public accounting is, especially at BKD. So we always wanna make sure that we are having some pop-up surprises for the office. So just a few things about us there. And then just to kind of let you know um, the scale of client that we are working with. Um, so we're probably, you know, mid-market, we're not working with Apple. Apple is not a client, Disney, Sony, you know, those really large Fortune 100 companies. However, we do have quite a few large companies for our region. So we do the Nelson Atkins, Kids TLC, uh, we do Union Station, uh, McCann Gordon Construction, Kansas City Symphony, and uh, the United Way of Greater Kansas City. So those are just a few of our many clients. Um, and as you can imagine, those are really fun. You get to do tours, Union Station tours of the Nelson Atkins um, while also doing their accounting work. So I wanted to make sure that I was able to chat a little bit about some of those clients that we work with. And then this, of course, is the map of where we are located. Uh, we did start in the Midwest. And so as you can see, we've primarily been in the Midwest, but we are slowly expanding. We added a few years ago our uh, Times Square location in New York City. Uh, we did Salt Lake City, uh, Austin. Uh, we have the Wisconsin. So I continue to, to see us spreading out for sure. Um, so if one of these locations doesn't uh, kind of be, it isn't on your radar yet, um, you know, it doesn't mean that it won't be in the future because we are always growing. So just wanted to make sure you got to see uh, lay the land in there. So. All right, so that's a little bit about BKD. Again, just wanted to let you know a little bit about who we are and kind of where I'm coming from as I'm talking to you guys about this. Um, it's always good to know, how does she know this stuff? Um, I am working with public accountants every single day in the office here. Uh, we actually do have more CPAs in our office in Kansas City than any of the other public accounting firms. Um, so it's, it's definitely um, a great place to learn about the industry. And so I'm really excited to kind of bring these, this information to you. Um, and just to let you guys know, some of you guys may know all of this already. Some of you guys may have no idea, but the fact that UMKC is going about, you know, offering this to you is so big because if you learn this stuff too late, it takes a lot longer to acquire what you need. So again, thanks so much for getting this set up. And um, if you do know about some of this stuff, you know, kind of let it go in one ear, but uh, hopefully you're, there's a few things here that I'll be able to cover that maybe you didn't know that will help you as you move forward in your educational career and in your actual career. So public accounting versus private. Tax and audit as well. That is another huge thing that is, I get this question so much. In accounting, you have so many different areas that you can go to, but entry-level accounting and public accounting, you usually do have a tax or an audit choice. And you can definitely change that up for sure. We do have a lot of people that end up in consulting or end up in forensics, and that's definitely something that you can do. But I think primarily you have the choice of tax or audit. People just don't understand what the differences are. So I'm here to tell you, um, just by talking to everybody, um, so, you know, upfront and real, having those real conversations, what is the difference? So in tax, you're going to process returns. You're going to be doing company returns. You're going to be doing individual returns, um, especially in public accounting. You are in the office more with a more predictive schedule. Obviously, we all know busy season for taxes. It's going to be in that springtime and a little bit more of a busy season for extension time in September. Um, but you know when you're busy, and that usually does not change. You do get to travel to clients, but not near as often. So if you like to travel a ton, tax might not be, you know, for you. It just depends on what your company's offering. But we do like to go ahead and have face-to-face -face time with the clients, but you are going to be in the office more. You do get to see all your coworkers in the office more because you are more stationary. You do have your own desk and you have a little, little bit more of that predictive schedule again and that consistency. And then of course, the biggest thing about tax that a lot of people, they, they feel like they're a consultant, they're a friend of the client. You are actually going to get calls throughout the year 
sometimes before the client makes a decision, you know, financial decision, they want to talk to you about how this is going to affect their taxes. How is this going to affect their business? So you get to kind of work alongside them as a consultant because you're able to see so much of that business through those tax returns. So again, the biggest thing though, if you ask anybody on the tax floor, why did you choose tax? I guarantee you nine out of 10 times, they're gonna say, because I didn't wanna travel a lot and I wanted to have more consistency in what my schedule looked like. So take that with a grain of salt. Again, every company is a little different, but that is something that I, I highly recommend just asking yourself, what realistically do you want to do? Do you like to travel? Do you like consistency? Ask, you, ask those things to yourself. Um, and that will help you decide a lot about tax market. Now with audit, you do work on a team to audit the business financials. Um, in mid-market, sometimes it's one week, two weeks, three weeks, um, and you'll be working with that team very closely, going to the client. Sometimes you'll be at a very large, marble, beautiful table um, in the boardroom working with the client um, and working with your team. And sometimes you're in a tiny little closet with a folding table. You know, it really just depends, which a lot of people like that, you know, not knowing and that, that fun aspect of it and being on the client side every day. So it is typically daily travel. Sometimes it is overnight, but for the most part, we do have more local. Um, a lot of our clients are driving as well. So maybe you'll go and you'll stay Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday night, you'll come home on a Thursday. Um, so that's definitely something, again, to consider if you don't like to travel, but it's probably not for you. And again, depending on the company, some they get on airplanes every week and then with BKD, it's more of driving. Your teams do change with each client, so there's a little bit less consistency with that. But if you like to work with a ton of new people all the time, you know, that's definitely something that's appealing as well. And then you will be, again, working with the client to solidify all the information that you need to get that audit together. And what you're doing is essentially just going in to make sure everything looks good. Um, it's not to catch fraud. It, that's not what we're trying to do with the audit. We're just trying to make sure that all the numbers are, are good and that it's another set of eyes. Um, that's just helpful because we're human and numbers sometimes can definitely get messed up. We just wanna make sure that with the audit, we're able to go in and, and find things that may need to be altered before they pr produce the audit report. So any questions on tax versus audit? see if there's any and you can come off of mute too if you'd like Kaylin there's nothing in the chat either okay no problem well then I'm going to go ahead and go public versus private um so this is another one too that you know especially if you are just going down the accounting route um I was shocked to know how many options there are <laughs> so public versus private is is definitely another one that most people they want to hear that the the good and the bad of both. And so that is what I'm here to talk to you about. Obviously, I work in public accounting, but I also, I see the pros and cons of it. I also see the pros and cons of private. So I'm going to go through some of those with you guys. So what is public accounting? Again, I had no idea when I took this job. I'm not an accountant. I am a recruiter, 100%. So I've been where you've been if you're asking the same question. So with public accounting, you're going to work with a variety of clients, industries, practice units. So I had mentioned, you know, the different clients that you've seen earlier. Maybe you're an audit for, you know, you do, you do all of those clients in a busy season. And so you get to see all of the different statements there because you're working with a lot of different clients. It's not just one. Uh, public accounting, you nine times out of ten are going to be required to obtain your CPA as well. Uh, we do do have a lot of importance weighing on that CPA, um, which we will talk about a little bit later. And then we also provide you with a professional education. So when you do have your CPA license, you do have to maintain that with continued education. Uh, it is 40 hours a year for most states, um, and we will provide that for you. So we're going to help you get the CPA by providing uh, Becker for you. We're going to help you with um, you know, webinars and things like that. We're going to give you some time off to take the exam, and then we're also going to help you maintain that exam by providing CPE for you. There is a career progression that you're going to be able to follow. Um, we do get raises uh, and compensation adjustments yearly, but we do have a specific route that you take when it comes to title promotion, so you will get to continuously move up. There can be demanding hours, for sure. I'm sure you've heard horror stories, and, and we'll definitely go into those. Now, with mid-market public accounting, I can assure you that you probably are going to work um, 
way less hours than if you were to do big four. It also depends on your client. It depends on what area you're in. But I know at BKD, we do not have the same minimum requirement hours as some of our larger competitors, uh, just because we are mid-market. So that's another thing to you know, be asking your recruiters about, asking for those realistic hours, because that is definitely important when you're making decisions. I will tell you, though, in public accounting, there is a lot of job security and there is a demand always for public accounting. So if you are wanting job security, public accounting is definitely the way to go. So professions in public accounting, I mentioned earlier, I'd showed, shown you those four boxes. This is how we are really broken up here in, you know, at BKD and the majority of the offices. So we do have audit, which is what I kind of mentioned earlier. We do the financial statement. It is sometimes privately held. It, um, you know, sometimes they require it. If they're a public company, you do have to have an audit because you have the stakeholders and they want to see that audit report just to make sure nothing's going wrong. And then we do the reviews and compilations as well. Um, now, tax is, is exactly what I kind of went over earlier. We are going to be doing those tax returns. We're going to be doing the consulting on how to get the best, best amount of money back um, for the client as well. Consulting, um, this is something, we do have some internships with consulting. We do have healthcare consulting where we're working with Medicaid and Medicare, trying to do those cost reports. Uh, we do have wealth management, so uh, financial services, uh, transaction services. So we do have quite a few different parts of consulting that also could be an option for you in the public accounting space. And then we have accounting outsourcing. So some accounting outsourcing, even though we are public accounting, we don't always require a CPA. So that might be a really good option for those that aren't wanting to obtain a CPA. And essentially what it is, is if you have a smaller company, you don't wanna have an entire um, accounting department in that company, you can go ahead and pay us. We're gonna go ahead and do all of that for you. So payroll and, and expense management, accounts payable, all of that, we will step in and do that for you at PKD. Any questions so far in, in public accounting professions? Okay. So another thing about public accounting firms, they are owned by the partners. So I think you guys heard me mention partners. So we have almost 30 partners in the Kansas City office, but we have almost 300 nationally. Our partners own our company, which means they really, really care. And so they do get really involved in the decision-making process. They want to make sure that their teams are feeling good, you know, they're feeling happy about their work. I think there's a lot of ownership there, um, not only physically, but they want to make sure that they are actually putting themselves into the firm emotionally as well. Um, only a CPA can perform certain things, and you're going to find a lot of CPAs in public accounting. You don't have to be a CPA to do some work or the consulting work, excuse me. So probably should have made that a little bit more uh, put thought out there. Um, and then the size ranges from large international to local firms with just a few employees. So again, we're mid-market and then you have the big four and then you have smaller market um, CPA firms as well. So it really just depends on what you're looking for and the different benefits can definitely vary between the firms. So you just want to make sure that you're asking the right questions if you do decide to go to public. And here's a list of some different public accounting firms as well that you may have heard. Uh, these are kind of the, the bigger ones here. So Deloitte, PwC, EY, uh, KPMG, I'm sure you heard of RSM, Grant Thornton, BDO, and then national firms. So obviously, like I had mentioned, we're part of Praxity Global Alliance to allow us to go international, but um, these are going to be your main national firms there. Um, so Clifton Larson Allen is CLA, CBiz, of course, us, Plant Moran, Moss Adams, Baker Tilly. So you can Google different ones, which ones are big in certain areas. Again, BKD is the largest CPA accounting firm in Kansas City even compared to the international firms that are here as well. So, um, And some misconceptions of public accounting, um, not every accountant does taxes. If you talk to an auditor and ask them to do your taxes, they may laugh at you and say, I don't do my own taxes. So that was something that I had to learn as well. Um, and so I'm sure you guys probably know that by now, but if not, yeah, no, not everybody does taxes in this office, that is for sure. 
Um, you work 80 hours a week. That is also a misconception, especially in mid-market. You do want to ask the recruiters. You want to talk to staff members, ask those really tough questions, and really try to make sure that you are getting the answers that you need to make the best decision as you're moving forward. Um, the misconception that you have no social life, also not true. Um, if anything, public accounting, a lot of people start right out of college. Um, very rarely do people go to private and then come back to public. It's usually you start in public and then you go to private. It's very well known. We understand that as well. So when you go to public accounting, as you can imagine, there are a lot of people starting from all different schools. Everyone's kind of the same age. We're providing a ton of events, um, a ton of networking opportunities. It's definitely a really good time. So there's always someone to go to lunch with. I literally just went into an office. There were four people in there, you know, trying to socially distance and everything, but uh, they're working on something and I needed to ask a question and all four of them are gone. They have all went to lunch together. There's always something going on somewhere to be a happy hour, dinner, something. So if anything, it's actually quite opposite. You're going to get to meet so many people. Um, I mentioned also too, only searching for client fraud. That is not our purpose. Um, we do run into that sometimes. We do have a forensics team here in Kansas City. We work with the Kansas City FBI but that is not why we're here. We don't want to find fraud. That is when things get complicated. So that is not the goal for sure. Um, that you work every weekend. Also definitely a myth. We do work weekends during busy season. As you can imagine, no one gets into public accounting thinking that they're only going to be 40 hours a week. Um, you know, that, that's definitely something that we do. But I will say we serve lunch every Saturday. Um, so it's free lunch. You get to see all your team members um, and it kind of just makes that the end of the week uh, a little bit better. So um, and then a suit and tie every day. Absolutely not. We are jeans. Uh, we are dressed for your client, but we are jeans. Now, if you're going to a bank and they require suits at that bank, then you would definitely wear a suit that day. But in the office, I am in a pair of Toms right now and jeans and a polo shirt. And that is okay. And so we do have a pretty, pretty lax yet still professional dress code, but you're not going to have to wear a suit and tie every day. So, um, so I do see, uh, are you able to go straight to private accounting? Absolutely. Absolutely. And we're going to go into private as well. So um, a lot of people do go into private right out of school and that's perfectly fine. Um, but again, not a lot of people go private then public. It's usually I would say nine times out of 10, the other way around. So you'll go public and then move to private. Um, people come in, they take advantage of getting that CPA exam, um, getting to work on a lot of different clients, kind of figuring out what kind of industries they like. And then a few years in, you know, three to five years later, they're like, okay, this is not, not for me anymore. I'm going to go work for a client. We've actually helped people find jobs on our clients. Um, we, we definitely understand this is not for everybody forever. That's how the model is actually that's how it works. So yes, you can definitely go to private accounting right out of, of college. Great, great question, Josiah. Any other questions? Okay. Well, I'm going to talk a little bit about private. Um, so a lot of people call it private accounting. Some people call it industry accounting. So this is going to be concentrated knowledge and tasks. So you're going to be working inside. I, I always try to give like a, a good example. So we have, let's say, Dairy Farmers of America. They're, you know, they're big, big company up the street here, headquartered here. I do believe that's their headquarters. So Dairy Farmers of America, they have a public accounting firm that comes in and does their audit and probably does their taxes as well. I don't know who it is, but, um, but they have that. And so that is just a client of the public. But then the people that work at Dairy Farmers of America, doing their accounting, doing their payroll, doing their internal audit, doing all of that in their accounting department at Dairy Farmers of America, that is industry accounting. They work in the agriculture industry of accounting. And then of course, again, you have the public that has a lot of different clients and then Dairy Farmers of America just happens to be one. So that is the best way I can explain that. It's more of the internal accounting of a company that is going to be your private accounting. So again, it's more concentrated knowledge uh, using the example of Dairy Farmers of America, a lot more concentrated in the agricultural industry of accounting. You do have more predictable work hours. You do have the same team. Um, so that's definitely something that a lot of, you know, a lot of consistency, a lot of people do enjoy that, but you are going to be working in that one 
industry. So that is something that you want to kind of figure out if that's something that you would want to do. You do have a wide variety of possibilities, including nonprofits and organizations. Um, obviously, we do try to spread you out to, you know, at BKB at least, to have a lot of different industries and a lot of different experiences. But if you know you want to be in oil and gas accounting, maybe going to Texas and working, um, you know, in, in at a, an oil company in their private accounting practice, that is going to be probably what you would want to do. It really just depends, again, what you're wanting to do and trying to figure out those options. So when it comes to professions in the private accounting field, these are just a few of the options. Um, and again, it just depends on how big the company is. A Coca-Cola is probably going to have so many different opportunities, whereas a smaller, more regional business is only going to have a few. Um, but you do internal audit. There's a lot of people that actually do the internal audit before the public accounting firm comes in and does the actual audit. So they're ready for them. Uh, financial reporting and analysis. Um, obviously, we have to have somebody following the financial reporting piece. Um, your, your standard accounting staff, somebody's got to pay you. You know, that's definitely huge. Uh, making sure that we do the reimbursement for lunch with a candidate or something. Um, and then the finance department and then budget and forecasting. Um, every company needs those little things. And that is where you can find your roles and, and what roles actually interest you in that private field. And now again, some companies are really, really small. Going back to the um, accounting outsourcing services that we offer at BKD. So that is public accounting, but we go in and we actually do this for that company. So again, if it's a really small company and they don't want to hire an entire accounting team, that is when they would come to us. So not every single company has their own internal accounting, but most do. So. Any, any questions? I know it's a lot of information. I feel like I'm just talking, but I'm really excited to get to get all this information to you guys because um, this was a learning process for me and I answer these questions multiple, multiple times every semester. So I'm really glad I'm getting to, to send it over to you, but I don't want it to be overwhelming. So if you have any questions, definitely um, feel free to, to send it in the chat or come up with me. Um, so some of the private accounting roles that you may have heard of, staff accountant or staff senior accountant or um, staffing man or accounting manager, financial analyst, um, controller, and then, of course, the CFO. Um, so you can definitely have several different pieces of the puzzle when it comes to private uh, accounting. And again, it just kind of depends on the size of the company on how many roles are in each. So. Misconceptions of private accounting. You only work 30 hours a week. You need to have a CPA to work in private. So one, um, I, I know a lot of people that work in private accounting that started in public and went over. They wanted less hours. Some definitely get less hours, but there are still going to be 60-hour work weeks. It's just going to happen. You're going to have end of the month all the time. You're going to have end of the quarter. So there are going to be some really busy times, even in, in private accounting. So definitely make sure to set the expectations there. Um, just like I, as a recruiter, my busy time is in September. That's when we do all of the recruiting. So um, I will work 60 hours. It just happens. Uh, but I like my job, so it's okay. But just make sure, again, to set that, those expectations and manage them and ask the right questions when you're looking for jobs to make sure that you're getting what you want. Um, and another misconception is that you can't move up in the company. Um, it, this is something that definitely can happen. However, it doesn't happen as often as a private or as in public, rather. Public accounting, it is go going to definitely be every two to three years you're getting another promotion, another promotion. When you're in a private setting, you usually don't get a promotion until someone quits or someone retires. So, uh, you know, not unless the company is massively growing and they create new roles. So that's another thing to be thinking of. If you have a controller and you have a CFO, you're not going to be able to move up into those roles until one of them leave or, you know, retires. So that's another thing to be thinking about when it comes to moving up in a company. Any questions at all about tax or audit, public, private, before I move into CPA information? You guys are a quiet bunch. Okay. 
Well, I wanted to go into the CPA information because again, this was something I did I didn't know anything about either. And the rules have changed a lot in the past few months. So I wanted to make sure that you guys knew about this. I'm sure that most of you do. A lot of our schools in Kansas do not know about this because obviously they're in Kansas. Um, but just to let you know, the certified public accountant, the CPA, is an accounting professional who has met state licensing requirements to earn the CPA designation through training, experience, and passing the CPA exam. So that is the official definition of a CPA. So all CPAs are accountants, but not all accountants are CPAs. So you don't have to have your CPA to be an accountant. It depends on where you're going in your, your career. It depends on your company depends on what you want to do. So again, all CPAs are accountants, but not all accountants are CPAs. So why get my CPA? It's a lot of work. I don't want why. I ask the same question. Um, it is prestigious. Um, you do get the respects, kind of like a doctor. You know, you get your, your doctorate, um, you know, your PhD. Um, so a CPA is very similar. You do have the ability to continue to grow in your career and have some more security in your career because you're going to be a CPA. Um, when you put a CPA behind your name on LinkedIn, your inbox just blows up with different opportunities because you have now acquired such a prestigious title that you're going to be able to maintain the key. You also are probably going to make more money being a CPA. If you're an accountant with a CPA, a staff accountant, and then a staff accountant without a CPA, more than likely that CPA is going to get you more money than someone doing the exact same job at the same company. So that's definitely something to be thinking about. Yeah, so the CPA exam, I definitely am going to, to touch about that as well. Um, so that's exactly, that's the next slide. So really, really great timing there. Um, so the CPA exam, to take that CPA exam, it is four sections, um, possibly five. So it just depends on the the state that you're in. Every state has a little bit different requirements. So you definitely want to make sure that you're checking in with the state that you're going to be working in and the state that your employer is requiring you or asking you to be licensed in. So definitely make sure that you know, know that information and are looking at the correct state. So we use Becker. Becker to me is the end-all be-all. And it's not just because um, it's not just because we work with them. But they, I think they have like something going with the CPA exam because the study questions are like identical to the questions on the CPA exam. I don't know what the deal is, but uh, they definitely are friends or something. So I would highly, highly, highly recommend Becker if you are going to get the CPA. It is pricey for sure, um, but it's worth it. They will walk you through it. They will help you plan for it. Um, there is Glime as well. That's another one that people use. Um, there are definitely quite a few out there, but Becker is going to be definitely the most bang for your buck for sure. And there's four parts. There's the auditing uh, or audit, the BEC, FAR, and REG. That's what everybody calls it. So you can see the different um, portions there. And then some states do require an ethics exam. Missouri is one of those states. Um, nobody really worries about that one, though. It's not, it's not a huge, huge deal. Most people are like, oh, I still have ethics to go, and it's not a big deal at all. So I do have quite a few questions here. I want to make sure to, to touch base on those. Does CPA help you in private accounting? Absolutely. More than likely, you're not going to be able to move up to a controller or a CFO position if you don't have your CPA. You could, but more than likely, they're going to want to make sure that you have had that CPA to where you can actually sign off on documents and things like that. So I definitely think it can help you. I think it would help you financially as well. And again, goodness forbid, there's like a ton of layoffs or something, or you know, the company's transitioning, getting bought out, and you have two roles, you know, you want to make sure that you're the one that has a CPA. Maybe that will help their decision making. I'm not saying that they would keep everybody, but it's always good to have that extra few letters behind your name because that is a very, it's, it's just like a degree. Um, you know, you don't have to have a degree to do a lot of jobs, but it's, it's very, very, it's required for most places now. And so it's just something, again, that just takes you a little bit step above because you put in all that effort and that hard work. So you can take the CPA exam as many times as you want. Now you do have to pay for it every time you sit for it. Um, 
So try to not do that because it can get kind of pricey for you. Um, I will tell you the pass rate for the CPA exam is under 50% for most sections. People fail. People fail all the time and it is okay. You can't beat yourself up about it. It is a tough test and it's something that takes a while. So I definitely, um, you can take it multiple times. Again, you would just want to check with your state that you're sitting in. Um, it's also something that you would be able to, um, you know, discuss with your employer, discuss with your school and ask, you know, hey, on average, how many times does it take to pass this? And you can definitely kind of figure out, okay, I'm going to give myself three times for this one, and then I'm going to move on to another section, then I'll come back to this. Um, so you can take it multiple times, but you do have to pay each time you take it. So just keep that in mind. Um, yeah, so you don't always need a CPA for private accounting. Uh, I know a lot of people, they, they come to public accounting, um, they decide, you know, they're not a good test taker, they don't want to get their CPA exam, so then they go to private because it's not required um, at all places. So it just depends on, on where you're going. It depends on how far up you want to go in the, the chain of private accounting. But if you wanted to just be, a, a, you know, right out of school, go into, um, you know, a, an accounting role at, you know, a local bank or um, a local company here, you would not necessarily, I don't think you would need your CPA. You might have to have your CPA at some point to be promoted though. So that's, again, that's something you just have to talk about your with your employer as you're going through the, the process of being recruited and going through the um, interview process on do you require the CPA at some point but most of the time right out of college if you're going straight into private accounting you will not be required to have your CPA but they may want you to eventually have it if you're going to be moving up in the company so great question um do you know how many credit hours you're supposed to have to get the exam um, in Missouri yes uh, that's my next one um Yes, Josiah, three letters do make such a big difference. It's ridiculous sometimes to think about it that way. Um, I have no professional credentials behind my name. I am just a recruiter. I'm not a professional recruiter. I'm not a SHRM, which is an HR sort of, I don't have any of that, but <laughs> I do wonder, I'm like, should I go do take some tests? But yes, it does uh, make a huge difference, especially because it is such a respectable field. So the CPA is a huge, huge deal. Um, the passing grade on a CPA exam is a 75. You hate it when you get a 74. I had a, had a student the other day get a 74. It was a rough day for him. If I am licensed in Missouri and want to work in Kansas, do I need to take the CPA exam again in Kansas? How does that work? No, you would need to apply for reciprocity in the state of Kansas. And um, so I'll go into that. Uh, Cassie, I think it's $200 to sit for the test, I think. And again, it just depends on what state you're sitting in as well. Um, is a CPA from one state applicable across? Um, no, you do have to apply for reciprocity. Again, I'll go into that. Um, hours, I'll go into that. Um, it does sound like the CPA exam is four or five separate. No, you do not take, you take them all separately. So you do have four sections, and then in certain states, you have the ethics exam as well. So that's five. In the state of Missouri, you do have five. You do take them separately. You want to be focusing on one specific. Let me go back to this. So like if you know you want to do audit first and get it out of the way, you want to focus just on audit. You'll take the test, get your scores, you pass. Thank goodness, moving on the BEC or moving on the reg. And then you just focus on those ones. Ethics, everybody always does that last. They want to get the hard stuff out of the way. Mm. If you um pass pass one of them, if in, but you fail the others, do you have to retake that one that you already passed? Not if it's within eighteen months. Hmm. No, it's a it's a lot. So okay, so let's say I am sitting down, and I'm going to do it in the order that's on the screen right now: audit, BEC, FAR, rig. So I pass audit. I pass BEC. I pass audit. Let's say in January. I pass BEC. And then in June, I'm at FAR and I fail. I need to retake FAR as quickly as possible, study more, you know, find out, you know, do all the Becker stuff. I need to still pass FAR and reg within 18 months of that January when I passed my first one. So you have 18 months from when you pass the first one to get all of them done. Does that make sense? Yes. Thank you. 
Yeah, no problem. Is it $200 per section or is it $200 for the whole CPA exam? It's you. Well, and again, I don't know a hundred percent, but I think it's about $200 per each time you sit. So again, if you sit for far and you fail it and you have to go back and you have to sit again, you have to pay it again. So again, it can get really pricey. So you, you would definitely want to make sure to take that into consideration. Kayla, and I'm going to chime in here too. Um, I can link the Missouri Board of Accountancy link in the chat too. Of course, like Kaylin said, it does vary by state um, and she'll kind of go through Missouri CPA stuff, but I'll link the Board of Accountancy so you can get more information about each exam, what it costs, kind of like what that looks like too. And that's, that's a lot of questions that I get about the CPA exam. And again, it is state by state. So definitely make sure that you look at your, you know, for Missouri, Missouri CPA. We're fortunate enough, um, our managing partner, so my boss, she's actually the, she's the board chair president of the Missouri CPA. So we get a really good, um, you know, firsthand look at when things change, which is great. Um, so to qualify in the state of Missouri, that's where BKD is. So everyone that works at BKD Kansas City, we ask they get their, their CPA license in the state of Missouri. And I'll go into some examples on how that, that may be different. To get your CPA exam in Missouri, you have to be a state resident, over 21, have social security number, maintain a permanent residence in Missouri. However, we're on the state line, right? I live in Kansas, but I work in Missouri. So what does that mean? So we actually have a lot of people that say, hey, I live in Kansas, but I need to get my CPA. Can you send me a letter stating that I, um, I work in the state of Missouri? So you can work in the state on a regular basis. So when you submit your paperwork to get your process started, you'll reach out to us. We'll get you that letter from our HR department, and that will absolutely be considered okay to be a state resident. So even though you don't live there, you're working there, that's good enough. The academic standards, you have to have 33 credit hours in accounting. So, um, and then 18 upper, upper level courses. Again, this is going to vary between states. So in Kansas, they have a lot more strict rules. So you wanna make sure that you are looking into that. And Ashley would be a really good one to talk to about that because um, she's very familiar with, with Kansas schools on what they required. You'll also need 27 semester hours studying general business topics. You need to have 150 hours completed with an accounting degree or a degree. No, it's accounting, not. We'll have to look that up. And actually, if you know, um, to it's be able, accounting, it is accounting. Okay. So, yeah, you because have to have so much account. of that has to be accounting credit. Yeah. Yeah. So, you have to have an accounting degree and you have to have 150 hours to get your CPA exam. However, starting July 1st of this past year, so just a few months ago, you can actually start taking the test when you've hit 120 hours. So that means you're gonna have a lot of extra time before you graduate to, to get those tests completed, which is really, really nice. That's only in Missouri though. So you do have to still have your 150, but you can start taking the test a lot earlier. And the reason why this happened, and this will kind of blow your mind. So a lot of students at Mizzou, I'm going to use Mizzou, for example, their professors were telling them to sit for the exam in the state of New York, because New York, you could start sitting for the exam at 120 hours. So that gave all their students an extra year to be taking that test. However, they weren't flying up to New York and sitting. You can take the test anywhere at any of the testing centers, it doesn't matter. It, when it's sitting, that's who you do your paperwork through. So what these Mizzou students were doing is they were paying the state of New York and, and going through the state of New York with all their paperwork, paying all the fees and getting their New York CPA license, then putting in with the state of Missouri for reciprocity to have their license transferred down. This way, it was like $300 extra for the reciprocity piece. However, they got to take their tests so much earlier. In a lot of places, we give a $5,000 bonus to employees that start and already have their CPA done. So it was $300 when they got an extra year to take that test. 
So that's why Missouri, they realized, oh my gosh, so many of our students are paying the state of New York. Let's just change our rules. Let's get that, get that money, obviously. And it, it lets the students start sitting so much earlier. So um, I know that's a very crazy example, but do you guys have, you know, come off of mute if you had any questions about that? Because I know that that's kind of, it's a lot and it's very hard to, to kind of go through. So any questions on that? Um, can you um, uh, uh, finish your schooling at least your 120 hours and then go into the workforce and then decide, hey, like later on down the line, I want to take my CPA exam and then do the rest of the schooling then? Yes. Yep. And it, Absolutely. Right. <laughs> Absolutely. Um. So international student, I do not think you have to be a U.S. citizen in the state of Missouri to have the CPA exam. That's something that I'm not 100% on, though. You would want to visit the, um, the state requirements link there and see what it's like for Missouri. Again, each state is so different. Um, the 18 months include the ethics exam. That I'm not 100% sure of. Do you know that one, Ashley? I think you have to pass all of the exams, including the ethics exam within the 18 months. Yeah, but I've never heard of anybody failing the ethics exam. I'm not sure, I'm sure Agreed. It happens, yeah. but I don't think I, I've ever heard. <laughs> yeah, I would echo Kaylin's um, thoughts and advice about how like, when you are taking the exam, you want to focus on each particular exam, like with all the students I've worked with in the past, you're not studying for multiple parts of the exam at the same time. You're studying for one piece, you pass that piece, and then you move on to the next piece. Yeah. And then um, if you don't take other sections within 18 months, it does expire. Yes, I did have a question for that. Yes, so it would expire. And I've had that happen to a few people too, and it is, oh, it's the worst. It's the worst. But you've come so far, you're like, I'll just get it done. It's fine. But, um, you know, again, with the 120 hours, getting able, you know, still being in school and having those good study habits and being able to kind of knock some of those tests out in your last year of school, it's definitely the way to go. So that's, that's huge for Missouri. Now, Kansas is not the same. Kansas does have a much more strict reciprocity rule. They also have different educational requirements. Um, and you also cannot start sitting for the CPA exam until I think it's like maybe four months before you graduate. So you're right on that, Kaylin. Yeah. So if you are planning on working in the state of Kansas and they're going to require you to have your CPA, I, I definitely would look at kind of what that requirement is, because you, the worst thing you could do is. Um, you know, get your, your license in another state, apply for reciprocity, and they say, you know, you're like three years into your career, and they're like, well, you don't have enough accounting credits, you need to go back to school, you know, nobody wants to do that, so if you know that you are interested in, you know, living or working in the state of Kansas, I would definitely talk to um, whomever you need to talk to and look into the, the Kansas CPA requirements because they are going to be a lot more strict and different states are the most strict I do believe is Texas. So if you can take your test in Texas and you can get it passed, you're probably going to be able to go anywhere you want to in the U S um, because I do think they're the most strict, but Missouri is one of the most lenient ones now. So, yeah, I would echo that. Um, if you just even speaking as a career advisor too, and someone who's coaching students, if you are at all thinking about, well, honestly, I would tell you, be thinking about where you want to end up after UMKC and be thinking about where you do want to work. Because so as Kaylin's been stating this entire time, each state has those different requirements and Kansas is more strict. Um, you do have to fill out a, a few more things and, and have a few more credentials if, if you want to practice in that state. So that is something to consider um, and be early on that. Do not wait till four months before you graduate to start thinking about this. Um, this is something that you want to start thinking about those decisions uh, long before then. Yes, because also too, depending on how backed up the, the stuff is, you can send in your information and they not even send you, the, like you're ready to go, you've got your Becker materials, you're like ready to start studying and you submit to get your first notice to sit for your first exam and it doesn't come for two months, three months. Especially in COVID uh, because so much of that has been backed up. Yeah, so 
definitely be on top of it if you're wanting to sit for the CPA exam and use the resources, you know, use the most CPA, use Block Career Center, you know, use your professors, they will help you. I know a ton of information. Um, if you, if ever one exam you pass expires, do you just retake the expired one? Yes, yes, you would just take the, the retake the expired one. So. That, if, if, and it expires, does that mean you still have to pay for that one or, but you don't, have to, you don't have to take everything else. You just have to take that one that expired, right? That is correct, yep. Great. Yeah. So at least you're not starting over completely from the beginning. No, 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 only the one that expired. Yep. All right. Any other questions about the CPA exam? That's the one I get the most questions about. And it's unfortunately the one that changes the most too. So <laughs> it's so hard to kind of keep up with. I was going to say, this might be like a, I don't know, like a dumb question, but like, is it like a multiple choice test or is it like a combination of a bunch of different things or like, like, is it like a standardized test kind of like format? Cause like, I've never heard anyone like say like exactly what, it, like what it's like. That's a really good question. Ashley, do you know? I've never taken it, so. I've also never taken it. So I have no idea, Tristan. Um, this That's would be a great sale. question. Yeah, this would be a great question then. Um, assuming of course, like if you're going to the accounting career fair, ask the representative there because most likely the accounting firms are gonna have people that are actually working in industry and our actual accounts. So talk to them about what that looks like. Um, Kaylin and I are HR recruiting type of folks. <laughs> so we've never taken the, the accounting test. We just know a whole lot about it and can tell other people about it. Yeah, uh, one of my professors told us that yes. question for you. So um, it's going to be multiple choice, short answer and problem solving. So the next question you get depends on the last question that you answer. So um, it's, it's going to get harder and harder the more you go. That does sound right. <laughs> no, that's awesome. I have another question. Um, is it worth getting your master's in accounting just to have that requirement of the credit hours you need depending on the state? Yeah, so I get that question a lot. Um, Ashley might feel differently because obviously she's in higher ed. Um, but I'm going to tell you, um, I'm going to tell you my opinion and take it with a grain of salt. Um, I think that however you get 150 is however you get 150. I had to pay for college on my own and I did not have extra money to be getting a master's degree. So I would just get my 150 and get out, you know, if it's basket weaving, whatever I need to do, as long as I've met my hours to sit for the CPA, that's what I care about in public accounting. That's all we care about as well. As long as you're able to sit for the CPA exam, I don't care how you got there. Again, taking yoga five times, not my, not my problem. That's fine. <laughs> However, you get to 150. I will tell you that getting a master's degree is 100% going to help you on the CPA exam. So you're going to learn a lot in those master's programs for the CPA exam. It's going to prep you really, really well. However, another thing too that you need to think about is, do you want to be in public accounting forever? In public accounting, I could care less that you have a master's degree. It's not going to do anything for your pay. I, I don't care. I just need you to be CPA eligible. However, if you know you want to be a CFO one day, what I highly recommend is going to um, you know LinkedIn or, or Indeed and looking for your dream job. Where do you want to be in 15 years, 20 years? I want to be a CFO of a cosmetic company. See what those requirements are, because a lot of the times they will require a master's degree. They're also going to require probably like 10 years of public accounting experience, too. So, you know, that's another thing, too. But look at those requirements. Most of the time they're going to take public accounting experience over a master's degree. But sometimes a lot of companies are going to want you to have a master's in accounting. So I wouldn't want you to take my advice of not getting a master's degree and then not be able to get your dream job later because of that that they want that master's degree, but it just depends on what's best for you. So there's two routes you can do. If you're going public accounting, I don't care about a master's degree. I care about the 150 and that getting that CPA. If you wanna be in private accounting and you wanna be a controller or CFO and those roles are gonna require that master's degree, then I would definitely look into it. Ashley, yeah, do you have I'll, any? 
Yeah, I was just gonna say I'll chime in and say that I completely agree. Um, even if I work for a student, you know, <laughs> like even if I work for a higher education institution, um, I don't think it's a good idea to tell you to go to grad school if you don't if it's not a good fit for you, right? And for all of the things that Kaylin stated, it costs extra money, costs extra time, costs extra, extra effort. Uh, so if that's not something that you're thinking that you would need long term for yourself. Um, just, just stay at a, at a bachelor's. Many students at UMKC um, keep that bachelor's and either pursue two degrees or they add minors to get to that 150 hours. Like what Kaylin said, um, you can take basket weaving if you want. Um, I mean, um, more, more typically accounting students, I think add on like finance or IS courses, um, analytics courses, um, things that are gonna be relevant to your career path later on, depending on kind of what you want to want to pursue. Um, but absolutely, you don't need a master's degree to get that CPA eligibility. You just need to get that 150 hours and that can be under, that can be bachelor's level courses as well. Um, and I think that was all I was gonna add on there. Yeah, Kaylin made a lot of great points that I uh, all agree with. So. <laughs> Thanks so much. Yeah. And again, I just, I don't want you to use my um, advice and, you know, curse me in 10 years when you can't get your dream job because you didn't get your master's. Definitely. Take exactly. The time yeah. <laughs> to look ahead and see, you know, and you can't yeah. tell in 10 years, I know, but if you think you may want to be a CFO one day, you know, you need to look at a lot of different uh, postings and see if they're requiring that. I think it's also important to consider whether or not you would want to pursue a master's degree in accounting or an MBA. If you're thinking long-term goals in terms of like leadership opportunities, mid-level CC opportunities for yourself, if you see yourself only in accounting or if you see yourself in accounting and finance, because I think that will kind of depend on what your what options are maybe out there too. Of course, that is 10 years down the line, um, but I think it's always good to maybe be thinking about those things. Uh, and kind of doing some research. Uh, Josiah, a master's, yeah, Kaylin got it. <laughs> An MBA is a master's of business administration. Um, yeah, no, that's great. That's great. All right. Um, great conversation, guys. Uh, again, these are things that you don't know until you know. And I'm happy to help for sure. Obviously, I want you to come work at BKD too, but I'm happy to help. I want to make sure that you're getting to the best place because if you're not supposed to be a BKD and start here and then you quit after a year, that's not great for anybody. So I'm here to make sure to educate you guys as well and help you through the process. So, you know, going back to kind of everything that we just talked about, what firm is best, what, you know, division, tax or audit is best, everything is great. Everything is going to give you a good opportunity. You just have to figure out what is best for you, figuring out public, figuring out private, figuring out tax and audit, and then being true to yourself. On where, what am I going to enjoy the most? Because when you enjoy your job, you're going to be better at your job. So that this is just, again, tons of information to be able to kind of help you guys start the process. Um, let's see here just looking here, a bachelor's degree in accounting. No, it's probably going to be about 120, 125 hours. So you would have to take extra courses. Um, oh, it's only 120 hours. Fantastic. Um, it's worth it to get the master's because it will take less time for you to reach 150. It does have a pre-MSA. That's awesome. Awesome. Great, great, great. So I'm going to go ahead and, um, oh wait, got one from Danny. Has an entry level associate coming into BKD and auditor tax ever negotiated their salary before no CPA fresh out of university? And if so, how'd that go? We don't negotiate salary right out of, of college just because everyone is starting on the same page. Um, when you start at BKD, one, I think we pay more than every other firm in Kansas City, except maybe one. We also provide um, Becker for you. So that's about a $3,000 um, savings on your part. You don't have to pay for that up front. We pay for it. When you do pass your CPA exam, we will pay to get the license for you. We pay for your membership to the Missouri CPA. Uh, we provide you with four weeks of PTO. Um, there's a lot of benefits that go along with being at BKB. And so uh, we also do profit share. So um, once a year, when the company makes profit, they give us a percentage into our 401ks. So our benefits are definitely there. There's not a lot of negotiating room because 
everyone's coming in on the same same playing field. Um, everybody's coming in right out of college. So no, no negotiations. Most people don't ask either just because everyone is pretty much going to be in the same ballpark. Um, and again, from what I've been told, we actually pay more than everybody except maybe one firm. So um, do you need to have internship experience to be qualified for the exam? No, no. Some, some firms will require you to have internship experience to be full time. We do not. I do think it's a very good idea to take a semester off and do a busy season internship, though, if you can. Uh, very, very worth it and good for your pocketbook. You get to make a lot of money. All right. And Josiah, you, when the accounting career firm comes, you're going to have a lot of options. So that's good. So going into the recruiting process, it's a great segue, actually. It, accounting is the craziest recruiting. Going in to find a job the last semester of your, of your degree is not going to work for accounting. <laughs> so glad you guys are all here. Um, oh, Beta Alpha Psi is great. So fall semester interviews. Now, this is one before I go into this. Uh, this is for BKD. Every single accounting firm is going to be different, but public accounting firms are going to be very similar. Private is going to be a whole different ballgame. So definitely keep that into consideration. I'm talking about public, though, and I'm talking about specifically what we are going to be doing. So fall semester interviews, all of the firms are going to come to the accounting career fair or meet the firms, whatever the school calls it. And then there's, they're going to have an on-campus interview day. Now, with the Career Center being under renovation, we may be doing virtual interviews, which is a big downer because we love doing interviews in person. But um, usually we would come to campus, we will handle all of the, you would apply, if you get selected, you'll select a spot, you'll come in on campus, you'll do your interview, it is what it is. So the upcoming year internships, if there are any left at the firms, so for this upcoming busy season starting in January, if there are any of them left at this point, then we will definitely be interviewing for those. I will tell you, we only have a few tax internships available at BKD. Um, we don't, I don't think we have any audit internships left for January. Uh, that doesn't mean other firms do not have options for you. You just gotta ask. And that's what the accounting career fair is for. The internships for the following year, we're also going to be interviewing for those. So I am going to be looking for spring and summer 2023 interns this fall. So again, it's really far out. It's just mind blowing, but it is, and that is how it goes. And if you, it doesn't mean that you're not too late. There's always going to be last minute for sure. We always, we added three internships and in audit last minute, like two months before people started in, in January. It happens, but you definitely want to be ahead of the ball game. Um, and then we are looking for any full-time roles that become available. Since we do not at BKD require an internship, we do want to make sure that uh, we're able to, to interview people that are straight out of college for full-time roles. So anything that we're looking for for 2022 or 2023, we are happy to interview you and get you in the process. Then we also do spring interviews. Um, fall is definitely going to be the hardest push for all of the public accounting firms. So I would definitely be very, very focused in the recruiting process in the fall. However, we definitely, you know, it's a year round thing. We definitely will um, be looking still for any other internships that we didn't fill in the fall for 2023 and any of the other full-time roles that we may have available for 2022 and 2023. So, um, let's see, I just wanna make sure. So campus recruiting events, this was actually at UMKC two years ago in the spring with a UMKC alum, Andrew. Um, he got his car stuck, it snowed that day, it was a mess. Um, so that was real fun. Um, but what, what these are, check with your professors, your career center the first week of school for a list of accounting and business events coming to campus. So meet the firms or accounting career fair, which you guys have the accounting career fair, business career fairs, information tables. Um, sometimes we'll just set up an information table like this in the um, Block Career Center. Um, beta Alpha Psi meetings, I know that that sent that, uh, and Ashley sent that over. Uh, beta Alpha Psi is this awesome organization, looks really good on the resume too. 
And then any other networking opportunities like this, this is awesome. You guys are going to get to know me pretty well. Um, obviously I've been talking for ever now. Um, but this is definitely something that is really good to attend. It helps build all of your information up for the recruiting process. And the goal of these is to attend as many, as many recruiting events as possible to meet us, the recruiters, meet our staff members, talk to us, figure out where you want to be. What do you do at these events? So this was a big KU event a few years ago. Um, ask each firm what the recruiting process looks like. They're all different. You definitely want to make sure that you're writing down those notes and you know what to expect for each one as you apply. Exchange your resume and contact information with your firms that you enjoy. Uh, make sure to know when your 150 hours, when can you work? We want to know when you work. 150 is going to be the main question every recruiter asks. When you graduate with 150, when you graduate with your 150, so make sure you know that. Start getting an idea on if you prefer tax or audit because they're going to ask you that as well. Find out when your schedule allows for an internship. Are you spring? Are you summer? Are you part-time? Are you full-time? Ask firms about their culture. That is a huge, huge, huge piece of public accounting. We are all doing the same things, but our culture is a huge piece. And then ask the firms when they will be on campus for interviews so you can apply via handshake accordingly. And the goal of this is, of course, to meet the firms that interest you and apply for the on-campus interviews for the ones that you enjoy talking to the most. Okay, so you've met with the, the firms, you've found out the which ones you wanna interview with, so now it's time to apply. So for BKD, we do have it on Handshake. We are very, very basic. Either you're full-time or you want an internship. I'm gonna be able to tell pretty quickly what, um, just from your resume, probably what you're looking for. However, in each job, you're gonna apply on Handshake. So we wanna make sure that you're applying and that Career Services is getting all your information on who's using Handshake. But we also wanna make sure that you are filling out this survey link. It's at the very top of the job and it's just gonna ask what location, tax or audit, are you looking for spring, are you looking for summer, are you looking for full-time? That is going to be just a quick survey. It will take you less than a minute. Make sure to do that and also apply to the job in Handshake. If you are selected to move forward for an interview, you will get a notification, you'll log back in, you'll check which time you want to do your interview, we'll be in contact on if it'll be virtual, in person, and all those instructions. The goal of the internship is to receive an internship offer and EBKD invite. For an associate, you're going to receive a second interview invite to BKD office, so that is what's changing this year. Previously, we've done a ton of events, you've done second role of interviews, however, it's moving really quickly. So for our internships, you might get an offer on the spot. Um, more than likely though, it'll be about a two week process and you'll, you'll find out if you're getting an internship offer within two weeks for BKD. Some other firms, they might just meet you the one time, give you the offer. We might meet you one time, give you the offer that day, but more than likely it's gonna be two weeks. And again, if you are applying for a full-time position, we wanna do an interview. And that interview, at that point, we will move forward, bring you into the office, let you meet some staff, definitely get to know us a little bit better in a more one-on-one -on -one setting to do a second round of interview with our partners. Going back to the internship offer, if you receive an internship offer from us within those you know, two weeks, so you'll probably know by the first week of October, if you're getting an internship offer, we want you to still take the time to get to know us. We're going to keep that offer open for you for a while, even though it may be 2023. We don't want you to make that decision right off the bat. We want you to get to know us. We want you to have time to think about it. So at the end of October, hopefully with COVID, we are going to have experience BKD. And that's exactly what it is. It's experiencing BKD. We're going to bring you in the office. We're going to show you around. We're going through renovations on all three floors. So it may be an interesting EBKD because tape and walls down and things, but we're getting a complete renovation, which is awesome. Um, and then you're going to get to meet some of our leaders. You're going to get to meet our staff. We're going to go to dinner. We might have like a casino night or something fun that really allows you to get to know who we are and to know our culture. So even though you already have the offer, you're not, we're not going to push you to take it. I want you to have it because if you're getting it from all the other offers, I want to also be a contender. I want to be there too. 
but we're not going to make you accept an offer for 2023, you know, that far out. But we do want to make sure to give you the opportunity to come and get to know us a lot better and to ask those hard questions. We're very honest and open about our recruiting process at BKD. Um, if you once you get to know me a little bit more, you're going to realize that's just who I am. You ask me a question, I'm going to tell you the answer. And we allow you to have a panel um, opportunity to ask even our managing partner, what do you not like about your job? That's fine. You want to ask that? Go ahead. We're going to be very honest with you because that's what's going to really help you make the best decision. So that is how the uh, process works. Uh, again, this is experience BKD we've had in the past. We usually have a partner happy hour, social event, you get an office tour. You're going to receive a lot more information about who we are to help you make that decision. And as you can see, we've had a lot of people in the past. We've had t-shirts made, we've done casino night, we've had trivia night. Um, it's a really fun event. Um, one time we had 63 people come to experience BKD. So uh, it's super fun to get to meet a ton of people, learn about us, see us, um, and just kind of enjoy the culture and see if it's a good fit for you. Um, so you are going to get, if you're, an, if you're looking for an internship, you're going to get offers on the spot. But I would highly, highly recommend working with the companies that are going to give you the opportunity to figure out what's best for you. Um, don't, don't just take the first one. You're going to probably have a, a, an opportunity or two to look at other places. Definitely take those. Um, I don't, I'm not going to force people to make those decisions. I would hope others don't either. I don't know what the other firms will do. But you definitely want to make sure that you're taking the time with this decision and you're you're asking the questions and you're experiencing the culture to make the best decision. Um, so that is what we're doing for um, the recruiting this year for our full-time and our internships. Um, again, full-time will have a more one-on-one -on -one personal experience. We'll be bringing you in and, and taking you to lunch with some of our staff one-on-one -on -one, and then interns will do the EBPD. So um, let's see here. What is an example of roles an intern at BKD is responsible for? It's a really great question. Um, our interns at BKD do exactly what our first year associates do. You have the exact same responsibilities. You go to the client. You might fly to a client. You're going to be working with our partners. You're going to be working with our clients. You may meet a CFO on your first week. We're going to throw you in with training and with support. We want you to have the experience. You're going to get hands-on day-to-day -day experience, just like our full-time folks. So it's a really cool a really cool experience. We also pay really well. You get time and a half. You go over 40 hours. That's always great too. Um, but you are definitely going to be treated just like our, our full-time folks. So it's a great question. Uh, employee percent retention percentage are on average. So that's more HR, so I don't know exactly. I will say a lot of people leave after about three years. That's very standard. We expect that. People come in, they get their CPA, they work a lot of different industries, they find out which one they like the most, and then they talk to us and say, this is not for me. And again, we've helped them get jobs. Now, public accounting is just a high turnover industry. I mean, this is just what it is. I will say, though, like I could say from an offers perspective, so we had internships uh, this past summer. Um, we had 100% offers to full time. Um, one was not in this office. He's moving to Colorado, but we gave him an offer for Colorado. He did a great job. So we do want to make sure that we are trying to convert our interns over to full time. So that's huge. Um, but for as a percentage, I don't know this exact percentage of our turnover. Um, but again, High turnover is just very standard in public accounting, but I feel like we do a really good job of knowing that it's a probably a two to three year mark when people leave. Um, but most people do stay two to three years. Um, that, that turnover is not very high. So um, how long are internships? During busy season, we have our interns start usually the second week of January. They will go through the end of the week of the 15th if you're um, uh, audit. If you're taxed, it's to the 15th of April. So either the end of the week of the 15th of April or April 15th, that deadline date. Um, summer is usually eight weeks. So just the two months um, that you're out of school. Um, when is the Experience BKD event? For this fall, it will be at the end of October. So uh, it'll be probably like a Thursday or Friday um, evening-ish, afternoon-ish. 
Um, is it an easy process to transfer from Missouri to another state like Texas and BKD? 100%. So we actually work together with all of the campus recruiters across BKD. We will even interview you on campus and refer you over to another state. I will say, you know, different states, like everybody wants to move to Colorado, right? Everybody's, I don't know why. I mean, it is a cool state, I guess. Everybody wants to go to Colorado. So there are certain things that they're going to be asking. Uh, if you just want to go to Colorado because you think it's pretty, might not be a great um, reason for that, that recruiter to be able to, to bring you in. Same thing with Chicago. A lot of people want to go to Chicago. They don't have a lot of spots. You know, if you have family from Chicago or you're from Chicago, um, you're moving to Chicago for you know significant other job, whatever. That is going to definitely be more sought after. So, but we can definitely work with any of our offices to get you transferred over. If you start at BKD, we do ask that you start in one location, stay at least two years, but then we'll transfer you wherever you want to go. Um, what are some of the qualities you look for in potential interns? Really great question. Um, we don't expect you to come in with a ton of knowledge, to be honest with you. Um, you're in school, we understand that, and we're very patient. What we do expect from our interns is a positive attitude. Uh, asking questions when you're not asking questions is when we get scared. And to be attentively listening and taking notes. All of our interns have access to these little bitty. I carry this with me. If you are not carrying this with you into any meetings or any questions you're asking a partner and you're not writing down everything, that's kind of a red flag because you don't know how many times you're gonna to have to flip back and, and see that you've already asked that question. So questions are great. Asking the same question five times, probably not a great use of time. So writing, writing down the answers, asking the questions, writing down the answers, keeping that notebook with you, having a positive attitude and you know, just being willing to continue to learn and grow. I think that's, that's the biggest thing we're looking at and work ethic. I mean. Everybody needs a little bit of work ethic. So that, that would be my top things that we look for. But we're not looking for, I don't need you to have 4.0 GPA. You know, I, great if you do. Um, definitely have a higher one in the accounting field. But, you know, we're also looking for, for those things that people just have. You know, that work ethic thing, it's not always something you can teach. Um, so when I see that you're involved in a bunch of stuff, you're still making good grades, you work part-time, that's huge. So those are some of the qualities that we look for. Great questions. I have been talking for so long, guys. Uh, I did not think I would talk this long, but um, what other questions do you have for me? Anything that I didn't cover, anything that I covered and was very confused, I confused you even more about that I could try to clarify? I have something I think you did kind of cover it because I'm in a little different position than most people here. I actually just graduated in May, but I okay. hadn't really figured out what I wanted to do with my accounting degree at all. So now that I do want to pursue the CPA, everything else, would you suggest me applying for a full-time position as opposed to the internship, since that's more for people that are still in college? 100%. Yes, absolutely. Okay. I would. As long as you're CPA eligible, and you, if you want to go public accounting, as long as you're CPA eligible, um, a lot of firms will probably still be looking for full-time. Um, you know, I can tell you I am still looking for full-time for January. So that might be an option for you, um, you know, if you wanted to apply and, you know, yes, January is a little bit farther off, but in that situation, I would say get a part-time job, study for that CPA and knock it out in that time, right? So there's definitely some benefits there. Um, but yeah, I think that as long as you are, you've, you're CPA eligible, just go ahead and start applying for full-time positions is what I would do. Perfect. Well, thank you very much. I was going to say, no I'm definitely going to do yeah, Maxwell, Maxwell, I'll email you directly too, just to get you get started on Handshake and make sure that you know where you're going for those opportunities. Perfect. Thank you. What other questions? Anything else? And if it's for you specific too, I can definitely try to help whatever your situation is. Um, Kaylin, I have a question. Um, I know you mentioned about the reciprocity when it comes to different states when being licensed. Um, do you know? Do you know what website they have that goes over that or in general? 
I do believe, correct me if I'm wrong, Nancy, that you can find all of that on the AICPA website. You should be able to look at all of the different states' qualifications, and then you could, I mean, it really would just be probably like a quick Google search, but you would try to, to stick to, you know, anything that's like Becker, um, AICPA, and then the state CPA websites. Um, you don't want to go off of something that's not very... Um, reliable. Um, but that I've never looked at the difference, but you, you should be able to see what each state requires on the AICPA website. And then you should be able to maybe go to that state and there should be something about reciprocity on there. Okay. Thank you. Yeah, no problem. Um, are your internships full-time and part-time or just full-time? Um, 99% are full-time. So um, we do, re we do ask that you are not in school during that time, because it is a full-time position for sure. We have had a few people do like, you know, one of their online classes is a little bit easier, not necessarily a major class, um, just something that they need to get out of the way. That's fine. If you're an audit though, you're going to be traveling a lot. So um, having to put your, your body in a seat is not going to be feasible for audit for sure. If you have a night class, maybe it is for tax. Exceptions have been made, but we definitely prefer a full-time internship uh, with no classes, just so you can really be dedicated to the role because it is intense for sure, but it's great, great, great experience. So. Kaylin, that's a good question that I'm not sure was covered exclusively. Can you tell them a little bit more about what years you typically look for for like internships versus, well, I guess just internships. So do you typically have sophomores who, who apply, juniors, what does that typically look like in terms of a student's undergraduate career? Yeah, I would say juniors and seniors is my, my main pool of applicants for internships. Okay. Um, just because usually we do fill up with full time. If you are in your master's, we can definitely look at an internship for sure, but we may not have a role for you right out of school because we've already filled those roles, right? So that's something that, you know, we've run into in the past, you know, it might take a little longer to get you back in full time right after graduation. Um, but on average, I would say juniors and seniors are definitely the ones that um, are applying with me when they get their internship. Um, like this year, it was primarily people that are graduating this next May. So, uh, Opportunities for accounting majors who are interested in data analytics and project management. Absolutely. Um, not as many internships, I will say that, but we definitely have entry level, um, you know, with data analytics. That's a little bit more non-accounting. Um, sometimes people do start in like um, audit and move over to forensics and do data analytics in that sense. I am hiring a bank regulatory compliance um, associate right out of campus right now. That's a very one-off role. And that, that person is just going to be going through a ton of data and making sure that we our companies are in compliance. So that's, that's another random uh, position. I primarily am looking at tax and audit, but there definitely are those positions. You just want to check out bkd.com. I was wondering, could you kind of touch on um, like what percentage of the uh, company is like with um, consulting versus like tax and audit? Yeah, let me actually, it's like roughly. let me go back. So I don't know it off the top of my head, but I do have. There we go. Consulting is about 25%. I see. Thank you. Yeah, no problem. I graduated in May 2022. Okay. Is it better to be looking for a full-time position or internships, having an internship preferable? Cassandra, yes, internships are always preferable because it just not only helps us know that you kind of know what you're you're getting into, but it helps you know what you're getting into. However, we know that that's not possible for everyone. I know I had to pay for school. I did not get to do an internship because back then they were not paid. That was not going to happen. So, um, you know, it, we understand that not everybody could do an internship. If you're graduating in May 2022, I probably would because more than likely I would probably go for full time because more than likely you're going to need to do a full semester of classes to reach your 150. And so you're not going to be able to take off in January. However, if you can take off in January to do an internship, push your graduation to next December and then maybe start in January 2023, that might be a really good option because then not only are you getting the internship experience and you get to start in busy season having a lot of knowledge, 
And you're also going to get a lot of money in your pocketbook, which is nice. And then you also can still you know, push graduation a little bit, but still graduate within the same year. So there's two options there for you. You can definitely go in straight to full time. Definitely something that's possible. I would not recommend that if you've not had an internship going in straight into full time in a January setting because that's straight into busy season and people really do struggle because you're coming in not even knowing where the bathroom is. <laughs> so uh, much less learning all of that stuff. And then, of course, right into busy season. Um, but if you're wanting to start mid-year after a, a May 2022 graduation, then I think full-time is definitely great. But if you can do an internship and want to do an internship and push off graduation, highly recommend it for sure. What were you saying, Ashley? I was just going to note that we are coming on 1.30, so I wanted to be respectful of your time and, and anyone else who, who might be on the call. So if you need to Check out at 1.30, totally fine. Um, I can. I know I can stay on the line for a little bit too if there are, are any other questions. Um, Kaylin, do you mind sending me these slides and then I can follow up or I will follow up with all the students on this call with, um, well, your slides, your information, link to BKD's employer profile, as well as a bunch of other accounting specific resources. Um, I know a big thing that was mentioned a few times through Kaylin's chat, but the accounting career fair is coming up in the fall. So this year's career fair with UMKC is going to be virtual. It's gonna be held virtual through Handshake and the registration is open for that right now. So if you want to talk with Kaylin and her team about opportunities at BKD, definitely register for that and sign up for a session with uh, Kaylin and her team to just chat through what those opportunities are. If you are nervous about the career fair and have no idea what to do or have never attended one, that is also where I can come in. Uh, we have all of our events in Handshake, our career events, including career fair prep workshops. Uh, so if you are thinking that you want to just have some knowledge or just learn a little bit about how to prepare for a career fair or even how to put together a resume, things like that, we will have plenty of those before the September 15th accounting career fair. So you can sign up for any one of those as well. Those are going to be led through me. They're completely virtual. They're easy to attend. And you can find all of those through Handshake as well. All right, cool. Um, Kaylin, any last words, I guess, <laughs> before we go uh, off? So again, guys, this was not to overwhelm you. This was just a conversation. Yeah. There are a lot of options for you guys. That's the best thing. If you're interested in accounting, you have a ton of options, which can be overwhelming. I kind of don't like to have options. Literally trying to buy a car, I said, husband, please just like pick out three and I'll pick out one of those. I can't do it. So, um, you know, there are a lot of options, but that is a really positive thing. The biggest thing is to use all of your resources. Hey, you're paying for career services talk to them. You're paying for your professor's salary. Talk to them. Use every type of resource you can to figure out what is best for you. Talk to us at the career fair. Definitely have your questions ready at the career fair. Um, I put my email in the chat, so definitely feel free to, um, you know, reach out to me if you have specific questions about you. Um, you know, in your path, we can sit down and we can do an individualized recruiting journey for you. We can do that 100%. So um, use your resources. Uh, don't be overwhelmed by this. You know, this was just, again, just a, a very broad, um, you know, bringing the options to you um, experience. But um, if you have questions, let me know. Happy to help. Uh, we Again, we want you at BKD, but at the end of the day, we want to make sure that you have all of the knowledge that you have uh, because we just care about making sure you get where you need to be and we're going to be happy. So, yeah. Awesome. So with that, I am going to kind of end the session for today, but thank you. Thank you. Thank you yeah. so much, Kaylin, for giving up an hour and a half of your time. And I know that was so much of you talking. Um, it was also a good refresher for me, just working in career services. I mean, I worked with so much of this. Um, but especially in times of COVID where it wasn't always the same routine of recruiting, mm -hmm. it's good to kind of have a refresh of what those timelines look like and what that process looks like. So appreciate yeah. that. All right. Um, we will go ahead and end this. I will be posting this recording online to the UMKC YouTube channel. Uh, so I will share that in a follow-up email as well. So you can have access to all of that and subscribe to our office. But thank you so much. If you have any questions, please let me know. Again, my name is Ashley Nance with the Block Career Center. Yeah, absolutely. Thanks guys. Have a great day. Thanks. See you, Thank you very much. later. Same to you.